Hi, Bobby Clampett here at my outdoor studio in Carmel, California, where I'm teaching this summer and got a really good question this week from Jim, who writes in, Bobby, first of all, I love your companion guide book. That's our new book that we just uh, let out. I asked for it for Father's Day and I'm enjoying every page. I have all your videos, so I recognize most of the photos in it. Now for my question, on page 94 of your book, you state that if someone ever tells you to develop more clubhead speed by swinging your arms faster, run away. Should I assume, therefore, that you're not a big fan of the super speed training approach, since that seems to heavily emphasize swinging your arms as fast as you can, which seems contrary to your approach of applying a stronger workhorse to create more clubhead speed? I vote for your approach. Just curious. Thanks, Jim. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to go to page 94 of the companion guide and read that paragraph to you. When a golfer tries to produce the power in the swing from the upper body, arms and hands, they immediately avoid the load lag workhorse sequence. The more power they create, the more out of sequence they get and thus the more erratic their shots. If someone ever tells you to develop more club head speed by swinging your arms faster, run away. A stronger workhorse will create more club head speed and in a way that will produce consistency and accuracy. I'm a strong believer in that. I'm also a strong believer that you can actually use super speed in a proper way to train the workhorse to work harder, which will produce faster club head speed. So I do believe in overspeed training. I think it does work, but the way that you work it is what's critical. I thought it would first be best to go in and show you how I believe the workhorse works best to create speed and consistency in the golf swing. No doubt about it that if we work on training the arms faster, we'll get more club head speed. That is a given. The problem in golf, if you do that, you're going to develop more inconsistencies because the sequence is not going to be there. The load lag workhorse sequence is absolutely essential to being able to build consistency, accuracy, and power in the golf swing. Here's how it's done. With the help of my swing on the Swing Catalyst 3D Motion Pressure Plate, I'm going to take you through my golf swing and show you what I purposely try to do to create more ground force reaction, which is what initiates the proper sequencing of the golf swing to produce the load lag workhorse sequence and get consistency and power in your golf swing. So let's go to my golf swing here and take you through the whole thing. As we go back to the beginning of the golf swing, we'll actually see not much happens in terms of the workhorse on the backswing. It's simply loading into the right side, as I like to do. You can see here from the balance plate information that already at this point I've got 98% of my weight on the right side. I don't necessarily agree you have to have that much weight on your right side, but I create a lot of load and lag in my golf swing, and therefore I need a lot of workhorse to be able to deliver it. So with the help of the 3D motion pressure plate from Swing Catalyst, let me take you through how I initiate ground force to create power and consistency in the golf swing. First of all, at address, I am roughly 50-50 weight distributed on each feet. In this particular swing, I happen to have a little bit more on my left side. As I take the club back, notice how I load into the right side so that I have about 98% of my weight distributed into my right foot at the top of the backswing. I'm in a very loaded position. You can see the hinging of the lead arm and the left wrist is fully hinged. From there, I'm gonna lag the club on the start of the downswing, and that's gonna initiate the sequence to start the club down from the ground. So the shoulders, arms, and hands lead the power of the backswing. The downswing sequence is entirely different where there's an initial push from the right foot. As I start down, you can actually see this blue vertical x-axis graph where I push down, that is I unweight myself as I start my downswing. This is preparing for the big push off of the right foot as I continue through the ball. In this particular swing, you can see I get to 78% of vertical on the start of the downswing. That means that I'm actually unweighting, lightening myself 22% of my body weight in preparation for the big push that's going to come in two different directions off the right foot.
If you take a look at the force horizontal x-axis graph, you can see in magenta that I'm at 23%. So I've already begun the right push off the right foot, but have not created the maximum push yet in the horizontal direction. As I continue down, you can see I, I actually get to 30% push off of the right foot. That's what transfers the weight. If you notice, there's not a lot of head movement here to start the downswing. It's initiated from the ground. Too many golfers I see initiate the start of their downswing from the upper body, trying to get their weight transferred to the left side by upper body movement, as opposed to the preferred lower body or ground force reaction movement that initiates the true sequence of the downswing. After the down push occurs, then the horizontal takes full effect. So it's actually the first one to reach its max at this particular swing, 179 milliseconds prior to impact. Then the torque takes effect. The torque is the ground force torquing. And you can see there, 1.39 is a high torque factor because I'm using the ground so much in a torquing motion as well. The dark gray, if you're wondering what the dark gray is, that's the tour average with the driver. It's like, this is a seven iron, by the way. And then the ground force reaction, you can see it's the last to hit max uh, sequence, or uh, the max timing is one, 105 milliseconds prior to impact. And it hits a max of 159% of my body weight. So that's how much I'm pushing off of the ground vertically in that proper sequencing. And that's what delivers the club into the ball in the most powerful way. That's where club head speed truly should get created from the ground up, not from the upper body down. So anybody who tells you to swing your arms fast, truly do run away because it's going to lead to over the top. It's going to really lead to throwing out club head lag and it's going to lead to the destruction of the dynamics. Dynamic number one, the flat lead wrist is going to break down. Your swing bottom is going to move rearward. Your path is going to get more out to in and more erratic because there's becomes more timing and you don't get on the natural arc of the, the plane of the swing because it's being manipulated through iron motions. So really important, really good question, Jim. I think it deserves a follow-up in taking the super speed and showing how I use the super speed to train my students to develop, yes, more arm speed, but how you develop more arm speed. It's through stronger ground force reaction. You see this in all major sports. Baseball pitchers are using this. Basketball players, baseball players at bat all use ground force reaction to create power. And when you're connected to the earth, that's where true consistency comes from because it's balanced, it's connected, and therefore you have more opportunity to hit the center of the club face as well as improve a dynamic number one of flat lead wrists and sustain club head lag through impact. Really truly is some of the real secrets to the golf swing. I know there are a lot of differing thoughts on this. That's my opinion. Clearly, it's the opinion of most tour players uh, that I've talked to as well. And so many of the great players are working on this very thing as we speak. So great question, Jim. Thanks for asking it and thanks for tuning in. So thanks for joining me on Clampett's Corner this week. I hope you enjoyed this week's extended version of Jim's question. You can always get more information at our website, impactsongolf.com. Come see me and my staff in Naples, Florida or here in Carmel, California. We're here to help you with your golf game. Hi everybody, Bobby Clampett here, founder of Impact Based Instruction. If this is your first time to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, hit the like button. And as always, leave your questions and comments below.